I don't know if you've noticed yet, but the world we live in is three-dimensional. And unfortunately for most of maths, we've been working in here, the Cartesian plane, with an x-axis and a y-axis, which is just two-dimensional. So in this video, we're aiming to change that a little bit. Uh, so you know your Cartesian plane, x-axis, y-axis. We can put a point on there, say point 0.32. We can put a position vector on there from the origin to the point 0.32. All good so far. Now, this is where we get a bit wild because... There's no reason the x-axis needs to go like that and the y-axis needs to go like that. Uh, so what I could do is rotate the whole thing. So now the x-axis is pointing down and the y-axis is pointing across. And now what we can do is take the whole thing and rotate it like this. So now the x-axis is pointing outwards, the y-axis is pointing that way, and the z-axis, our new axis, is pointing upwards. And now, that's not 0.32 anymore, that's 0 0.320. 3 on the x-axis, 2 on the y-axis, and 0 on the z-axis. And now, why don't we change that point a little bit? Instead of being 3.2.0, let's move it up a little bit. Let's move it to 3.2.4. And that's our new vector, point of 0.324 and position vector, 3, 2, 4 as well. That's 3i, 2j, and 4k. But it's all well and good having that fancy graphical software, but you're not going to have that, so you need to be able to draw this uh, with your pen. Ta-da! Okay, here we go. So, a little bit, little bit strange here, because this is called my y-axis. And this, straight up and down here, is going to be called my... Let's call that our z-axis. Get rid of that bit there. And then on an angle over here is my x. And so on this, we're going to draw our vector 2i plus 3j plus 4k. And to do this convincingly, you've got to use it from dotted lines and things like that. So a 2i, so it's 2 out here like this. And I'm just going to like put in some dotted lines over here like this. 3j. Okay, j is our y component. So 1, 2... Three. And I'm just going to put in some dotted lines parallel to the x-axis here like this. Okay. And then I'm going to go up 4K. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, and I'm just going to put in some dotted lines um, parallel over here like that. Okay. Now, I'm also sort of going to put in some lines here like that. Lines like that. There it is. All right, there's our vector. We kind of, what we've kind of created is like a box for our vector to live in. And you can see that that kind of makes it look three-dimensional, like it's coming out of our box. And that is 2i plus 3j plus 4k right there. Now, I think it's fair for you to say, well, that was easy because they were all in the positive quadrant. But what if they were like in one of the other one, two, three, four, five, six, eight quadrants of this three-dimensional um, plane, or this three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system? Uh, well, that's fine, right? So negative three i, we just need to move backwards that way. Two j, uh, we can still move that way like that. And negative four k, we're going to have to move down there. So I'm just going to get my ruler out and create like a negative x axis over here and a negative um, z axis there. All right, so I've got one, I've got another one there. All right, so negative three i, so it's gonna be like one, two, three, about there. And I'll just draw some dotted lines in here like this. I might need some more in a minute, let's see how we go. Plus two j, okay, so that's two j there. I'll just um, put some dotted lines in there, but they need to be um, in line with my, with my x axis. Okay, so there's my little like plane there, right? And then the next bit is negative 4k. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, and then I need to move across parallel with the y-axis. And then uh, backwards um, parallel to the x-axis. Until we sort of get to that, that meeting point there. And then there. And so I'm generating like another box. So 
So where's my two? My two was there, so there's the two there. Okay, and what we end up doing is moving backwards, backwards, three, across, across two, and uh, down by four. With there, and hopefully, hopefully, you can visualize that we've moved backwards through the page to that one there in pink. Now, the question is, what can I do with uh, two three-dimensional vectors? Well, anything you can do with two two-dimensional vectors, you can do with two three-dimensional vectors. Uh, so if I wanted to add them together, that would be really straightforward. I just add the I components, add the J components, add the K components. Uh, now, in this one, something really interesting happens, and the K components cancel out, so we end up back on the plane. Um, and when we add these two together, we'll get uh, 2 plus negative 3, which is negative 1, 3 plus 2, which is 5. All right, so we can add three-dimensional vectors by adding their components. Uh, what else could we do? Um, we could do the dot product or scalar product between these two vectors pretty easily as well. So if we wanted to do v dot u, it would just be uh, the i components, 2 times negative 3, plus the j components multiplied together, plus uh, the k components, multiplied together. So we can do a dot product really, really easily. We could also do the dot product in the other way. So we could say that, uh, well actually let's let's do that. Let's find out what that number is. So we've got a dot product of negative 16, but we could have done the dot product like a different way. So we could say that uh, v dot u is equal to uh, the magnitude of v times the magnitude of u cos the uh, angle between them. Now, uh, the magnitude, well, how can I find the magnitude? Well, I just do um, Pythagoras in three dimensions. So V is just going to be uh, 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared square root. Uh, U is going to be negative 3 squared plus 2 squared uh, plus negative 4 squared. Uh, now, cos theta... And that's going to be the angle between them. That's really cool. We're going to find that angle between those two vectors. Um, now, the dot product, we already calculated that a different way, negative 16. So we can rearrange that now. So uh, find the answer to that, find the answer to that. Rearrange, inverse cosine, and come up with some sort of answer. Just to correct my working, multiply in there, obviously, and a multiply in there. We get this neat little root 29 times root 29 in here. So that's just going to be uh, 29 uh, cos theta. And that's going to be negative uh, 16 over 29 inverse cos. And that's going to be theta. And theta is going to be about 123.48 degrees, which kind of makes sense there. That's a pretty steep angle. That's another angle heading off in another direction, 123.48 degrees. So we can do our dot product there. We can do our magnitudes here. We can do our dot product using the uh, i, j, and k components as well. Um, everything I've done so far has been in Cartesian form. But what if polar form? There is a way to do polar form with this stuff, but just before I get there, we need to step through one more little bit, and that is finding the angle between a vector and e any one of these three axes. So you might be trying to find uh, the angle between the vector and the y-axis, or the angle between the vector and the x-axis or uh, the angle between the vector and the z-axis. Now in all cases, the formulas are all the same. So, straightforward, cos theta, which is uh, this angle here between the vector and the x-axis, is equal to um, the i component over the magnitude of the vector. Uh, now this vector, this angle here um, between the vector and uh, the y-axis, it is the j component over the magnitude. And finally, uh, gamma here is equal to uh, the, x, the k component over the magnitude of the vector. Now, if you build this out of pencils and try to figure it out on your desktop, you'll see exactly why this works. It's basic Sokotoa. It's just um, 
uh, adjacent over hypotenuse every single time. So if I wanted to find this angle, it really is as straightforward as saying, right, that's the number two. Uh, the magnitude of that, I've already figured it out, it's root 29. Um, and the theta is equal to the inverse of 2 over root 29. And a calculator will easily give you an answer for that one. 68.19 degrees. Now hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. If we can find these angles here, we can start thinking about working in a polar form uh, in three dimensions. So I'm going to keep this short because I'll make another video where I do some calculations for polar form in three dimensions. But if you want to deal with a vector in three dimensions in polar form, it's really straightforward. You put yourself at the origin facing this way, right? Facing uh, the positive direction of the x-axis. And then you rotate yourself some amount um, anti-clockwise like you normally would in two dimensions. Okay, now this is just a guideline for now. So you rotate yourself by this angle here, call it theta. And then what's happened is you've, you've rotated, sorry, you've rotated yourself by this amount. And now what we're going to do is rotate upwards towards the sky. Okay. Now this angle here. Uh, we call the altitude angle, and we use the Greek letter phi uh, to represent that. All right, so that's the angle from the ground upwards to where we want to go. So if we want to express this in polar form, very straightforward, we can say that vector v is equal to um, the magnitude of vector v, um, the angle here from the x-axis, and the altitude angle there. All right, and that's literally all we need to be able to talk in polar form. Now, we'll sh talk about how to calculate polar form, how to convert between polar form and Cartesian form, but that's just a brief look at what it's going to look like.